All right, so let's look at three separate beams, uh, three separate problems, three separate loadings, and let's draw the shear diagram and the moment diagram and see if y'all can figure out, and we'll write out the rules, but figure out the graphical method with me. So with this beam right here, we're looking at it. The shear diagram starts at zero, goes up to 100. It does nothing. Then, then it goes straight down from positive 100 to negative 150 right there. Then it goes over, then it goes up to 150 or up by 150 back to zero uh the second one starts zero goes up 18 then nothing happens and it goes down by 10 so we go from 18 to 8 then it does nothing then it goes down by 8 back to zero you seeing some things here um that you can kind of figure out the rules and it all goes back to some of the forces and y is equal to zero it all goes back to cutting it and solving for the internal V, right? These are the internal Vs uh, at every location on the beam. Now, this next one, a little bit different. See that distributed load, and it made the shear diagram go kind of down straight uh, from zero to negative 10. Then it goes up from negative 10 to negative 0.5. Uh, then nothing happens until the very end. It goes back to 0.5. So those are three shear diagrams. Um, and so now let's write... Uh, right with me here, the kind of the rules for the shear diagrams. Now, as we're writing this, I think of the shear diagrams as if I am walking along the beam, and if I see a force, what happens, that pushes me up or down. So the first thing, all these concentrated forces, they push the shear diagram straight up or straight down immediately. You saw that, right? Uh, so you know, if, I, if I'm walk, kind of walking along, if I see a 100-pound force pointed up, the shear diagram goes 100 up. If I see a 250-pound force pointed down, it goes down by that amount. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. And so if your uh, load is just concentrated uh, forces, then shear diagrams, diagrams are very easy. It goes straight up, straight down. All right, but how about that distributed load? Did you see what happened with the distributed load? The distributed load pushes it down but not immediately right the distributed load like that's two kips per foot so you know as i'm walking along i start to feel this distributed load at the beginning i, I start to feel a little bit it pushes me down i feel it some more it pushes me down more i feel it some more it pushes me down more it pushes me down a total of the magnitude of the distributed load. You all know from statics that magnitude of the distributed load, you know, would be kind of that area, two kips per foot times five feet. So it pushes me down by 10, but not immediately. It would be gradually a uniform distributed load pushes me down uniformly, right? Pushes me down linearly, all right? And most of these distributed loads are going to be down, so, you know, generally pushes me down. Uh, you probably already knew the magnitude of that distributed load because you had to do statics at the very beginning of the problem to find the reaction forces. Um, but uniform distributed loads push, push you down uh, linearly. All right, the next thing that uh, I've noticed is here, it's flat in a lot of these places, right? When there are no forces, no loads on the beam, then that shear diagram does not change, right? It is flat. Um, I also should mention kind of here that those moments don't change the shear diagram, right? So as I'm looking over there at the third one, it's flat at 0.5, at 0.5, at 0.5, even though there's a moment there. But if there's no forces, then the shear diagram is flat. And when it's flat, the slope is zero. Right, are y'all noticing anything, uh, especially about these last two uh, rules, um, you know, the distributed load pushes shear up and down by the area under the curve. When there is zero forces, the shear diagram is flat, right? The slope is zero. What it turns out is the shear diagram is the integral of the loading, right? If we were to think about our shear diagram as a function, sorry, if we think about our load as a function, then the shear diagram would be the integral of that function. So two important things that means. That means that the area under the loading is changes our shear diagram, right? The area under the loading changes shear diagram. You saw that with the distributed load, um, but then also the 
loading is the slope of v. So similarly, kind of with that distributed load, that distributed load, its magnitude is 2 down, and so our slope of that shear diagram is negative 2, right? It pushes you down linearly with a slope of 2. Uh, later on, we'll go into triangular distributed load and other types of distributed loads, but it is the integral, right? The shear diagram is the integral of the loading, integral of the sh um, distributed loads. And then lastly, just notice that it starts and ends at zero. It has to start and end at zero because it's kind of like you're hopping off of the shear uh, diagram. And when you're hopping off the shear diagram, you have to hop off at zero, right? It has to be in static equilibrium. So that's a great way to double check your work. Make sure the, the shear diagram, obviously make sure it starts at zero, but it should end at zero. The last thing that you do should bring it back to zero. That 150 brings it back to zero. That eight down brings it back to zero. That 0.5 up brings it back to zero. But overall, the main thing though is imagine you yourself are a little person who's walking on your shear diagram. Uh, the, you are getting pushed up and down by the loading. When you see a force pointed down, shear diagram gets pushed down immediately. See a force pointed up, shear diagram gets pushed up immediately. When you see a distributed load, it pushes you, if the distributed load is down, it pushes you down by the slope of the distributed, the, the slope is the magnitude of the distributed load.